Oh my god, I hope we won't kill ourselves. Okay, who knows the answer? You, you, you. Surprise, surprise, yes. They're also Australian version. English became the international language. We're going on Google, American company. British Empire decided to take over the world. What does it have to do with my life? Like, all right, GDP, who cares? Like it or dislike it, that's what happens. So what kind of English should you learn? I have an answer for you. No need to think. <laughs> Hello and welcome. My name is Lola and on this channel we're talking about learning English as a second language. Or third language. ESL crowd, you're welcome. And in this video we finally would ask a question. What kind of English should you learn? British or American English? You will answer this question to yourself. I want to start from the most important point, and I keep mentioning it on this channel. Your purpose of learning English, your why. Why do you learn English? Why do you need to know it? And if you know your answer, you can scroll forward to the portion of this video where we're talking about British versus American English. And if you don't know yet, I hope this video will help you to define it. So are you going to travel or live abroad? Which country? What type of English language this country is using? And here you can do your own research. For example, of course, if you're talking about Canada, you see geographically it closer to America. So the impact of American English will be bigger on Canadians even though historically they've been influenced both by American and British English. Where do you want to study? Maybe you're planning on applying to an international university. Where is it? What kind of English will they use? What kind of educational materials this university uses? Think about that. That will help you to define. Another question you can ask yourself, what is the influence of the media in my life? Meaning, what is my favorite movie? What is my favorite director, actor, actress? What kind of books do I like? What kind of English language is used for this content? Maybe you're a fan of Harry Potter or you're dreaming of enrolling um, in Oxford, or maybe you want to live in Liverpool. That means you will be leaning towards the British English. Or you're dreaming of living on the beach, surfing, sipping tasty Australian coffee, uh, digging into Melbourne culture. That means <laughs> you want to live in Australia, so you need to dig into Australian version of English. Surprise, surprise, yes, they're also Australian version of English language, the accent specifically. But not only the accent, the choice of words, the vocabulary differs, the slang, the intonation, all that forms that specific kind of English that you'll be using as your communication tool. Understanding what kind of English you want to learn helps you to narrow your focus. Learn cultural nuances of that particular kind of English. Avoid confusion and adapt to your future needs faster. So I hope most of you by now will have your why, will have the answer. But what if you're not planning on moving abroad. What if you're not planning on studying or working in an English-speaking country and you don't really need English that often and that much and you just want to know it as an international language so you're able to communicate to people from other countries who speak different languages? So what kind of English should you learn? I have an answer for you. No need to think. <laughs> if you don't have time, I can just throw the answer at you. But I want you to arrive to that conclusion with me. I am myself a product of tendencies in the world. So before we jump into the answer, American or British version, which one should you learn if you don't have a specific purpose or need? Which one should you make the number one? <laughs> 
Before that, let's look into how English overall became the international language. It's important to understand, and you'll see why later. Who knows? Who knows? Okay, who knows the answer? You, you, you? No? Okay. Chat GPT knows the answer. <laughs> So, what happened? Of course, colonial expansion from 1600s to 1900s, British Empire decided to take over the world. And of course, they brought the language, the British English, to these countries. Then, the Industrial Revolution has happened in the 18th and 19th centuries. And once again, Great Britain was ahead of a lot of countries and so English became the language with a lot of new investors and business people and scientific publications, chat GPT tells me. But doesn't matter, the whole idea I hope is clear to you. The impact of British Empire on the world was undeniable and that's how English became the international language. If my answer is not convincing, go on chat GPT. I don't want to quote the whole article. Uh, it's like when you're trying to put your thoughts together and make them more polished, you use chat GPT, but then you kind of start citing chat GPT instead of giving your own thoughts. And I want to make it simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it. The idea is they they had power, <laughs> they brought the language. The language became an international language. But, and it was like that until the World War II. Let's look into that period. After that, the huge shift happens. After the World War II, United States started experiencing the rapid economic growth. What does that mean? That means that we have to Google a couple things. Let's forget everything and just think about the things that affect our life every day on a daily basis. What do you watch? What do you listen? What do you consume? What do you use? You, you, I'm talking to you. Myself, I wake up, grab my iPhone, look at the... Instagram, <laughs> I, I, I try not to, but that's the reality. Um, or I look at some stuff online, maybe I had a thought. I open um, a meditation app, listen to a lecture, I use YouTube for yoga, I um, use MacBook, I um, talk to my English speaking husband. Well, anyways, it's like, now let's think. What was the origin of all these things? And for that, I want to open Google and Google simple question. So I want us to understand the current tendencies in the world, the tendencies in English language. For that, we're going on Google, American company, and Googling GDP countries with the highest GDP. If you don't know what's GDP, if you haven't studied economy or anything like that, practically that's the amount of product being produced, gross domestic product, meaning the more simple words, the more you produce, the biggest impact on the world you have. So let's see that. United States, 20 trillion, UK, 2.67. So United States almost eight times bigger GDP and number one country in the world. And look at that, how much ahead of the next competitor, China, the United States is so much ahead. This is just the economical factor. And you could think, well, what does it have to do with my life? Like, all right, GDP, who cares? But then let's look at technological development of our world. Of course, technology is everywhere. We are on the tech path, like it or not. <laughs> oh my God, I hope we won't kill ourselves. Anyways, <laughs> we're not talking about that human beings. Let's take a look at the biggest tech companies in the world. Google. 
Da 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 da. Apple. American company. Google. American company. Meta. American company. Microsoft. American company. IBM. Intel. Amazon. Alphabet. Oracle. Honestly, I think the next not American company. Oh, Sony. It's not American, right? Uh, what else? Huawei. You see that. But you understand the magnitude, right? The top tech companies that form our everyday life, like the way we process things, the way we operate on a daily basis. And all of these companies are using American English. Another important thing, I don't know, I don't know how about you, but I grew up watching not all, but a lot of American movies. Actually, my favorite movies, the movies that excited me, the movies that made me think, wow, that actually made me want to move to America to study acting. All of them were American movies. I loved American actors and American directors. So the entertainment industry has a huge impact on the people around the world and specifically Hollywood and all other American companies. But I don't want to I don't want you to take my word for that. Let's Google. Okay, the biggest entertainment companies in the world, and I add with the country, meaning which country they're from. Disney, America. Warner Brothers, US. Nintendo, by the way, Japan. Okay, finally, not US, right? Not finally, I mean, I don't want to talk down on that. I, that's just the tendency and we gotta acknowledge that. Paramount, Warner Brothers, Fox Company, Universal, Warner Brothers, Live Nation Entertainment, American companies. So all these companies producing content that affect us on a daily basis, and they all are using American English. Or if you don't care about the companies, let's talk personalities. Let's say the most popular entertainment artists in the world, and we get... The Weeknd. Actually, he's Canadian, but you know that he works in America and he uses American English. Miley Cyrus. Shakira. Interesting, because Shakira is not American, even though right now she lives in America and um, in Miami. Where is she from? Is she Colombian originally? Shakira. Ariana Grande. Taylor Swift. Rihanna. Ed Sheeran is British. Okay. Justin Bieber, Canadian. David Guetta. I don't know. I guess he's American. I don't know. You got the point. Okay, let's talk about the science. I've chat GPT'd which nationality holds the most Nobel Prize winners. And as per its last update in September 2021, United States has the highest number of Nobel laureates. Why? Because, you know, they have robust research infrastructure, they historically invested heavily in science and research, and they would attract minds like brains from the outside. Um, and U.S. has been a hub for intellectual scientists, researchers from around the world drawn by its academic and research opportunities. People want better life, they want better opportunities. If they're smart, they go to the United States. Well, that's the reality. You might like it or dislike it, that's what happens. Well, I guess nowadays, gladly, the shift changes because now you can live anywhere in the world and work um, using American English. But the fact is the fact. I think you got the point. The impact of United States on the world is undeniable. So if you're lost right now, not knowing what's your purpose of learning English, and you just want to know it as an international language, I would recommend your learning and practicing American version of English language as the most relevant version. Finishing this video, I wanted to tell my story. When I was learning English, um, and you can watch my English learning journey video where I've 
talked about all the steps I took to learn English. Um, I don't know what kind of language I was learning, and that's why I wasted a lot of time. My efforts were not focused, so it took a long time. I didn't have good results until I had the clear purpose. So all the efforts accelerated towards reaching that goal. Not even acknowledging that I was attracted to American entertainment industry that made me come to LA and that made me learn the American version of English. See, that happened naturally in my life. And I'm so grateful because nowadays traveling around the world, I I never have any problems communicating. People always understand my language. They always understand my English. Of course, sometimes I gotta dial it back. You know, I see if a person speaks with a heavy accent, I'm trying to kind of locate the accent and kinda, you know, speak with the same type of language so we can communicate. Because by the end of the day, English is a communication tool. We don't learn language for the sake of knowing language. We learn language for the sake of achieving our goals and dreams and just being a world person. That's something to think about. So I hope this video helped you to understand your goals, to narrow down your purpose of learning English and gave you the understanding that the most relevant version of English nowadays as an international language is the American version of English language. That we help you to practice and learn in our app Lola Speak. Download now! <laughs> okay, if this video was helpful, please like, subscribe, help us to spread the message, help us to help other people on their English learning journey. Leave a comment below what other topics interest you and how we can help you on your journey. Anything else? Nothing. Bye!